Right, gents, thanks for joining me. We're basically playing Would I Lie to You from uh, the BBC, so we've nicked the format there. So if you're not familiar with the show, uh, you've all come with a couple of stories each. I'll ask for three, but we might only get round to doing two each. They could be true, they could be false. Obviously, there's a villa element to these. Uh, what kind of sparked this idea to Matt, your famous story of meeting Paul Lambert and getting pieces of paper thrown at you. Sounds like a lie, but that is true. Uh, so I'm hoping that will crop up similar stories throughout this show. You will earn points throughout this as well. So let's say, for example, Matt, you go first and your story is, is a truth and Ty and Neil say it's true, they'll get a point each for getting it correct. If you trick them and it's a lie, you'll get two points for tricking two people. So that's the format. Neil, I'm going to nominate you to go first. So do you want to re- reveal your first story and the three of us will quiz you on whether it's a true or a lie? I once um, shared an apartment on holidays. Sorry, I was once in an apartment beside George Boateng in holidays in, on holidays in Sulu. Instant reaction is a lie. I don't know why. I just feel like I get that. Did you speak to lie. him? Did you speak to him now? I, I I didn't, and I only realized it was I only realized it was him like on day four. I was <laughs> nine, ten. Okay. Um, no, I wasn't. I was older because I knew who he was. So I must be about sixteen. <laughs> I'm instantly going to lie already for this. The story's all over the place to begin with. Um, where's Where's Salou? Where's that? Salou is just outside Barcelona. Okay, yeah, Salou's not the lie, Dan. Salou really is a place. <laughs> <laughs> Who was you in Salou with? Well, my parents. Just your parents? No, my sister. Like, so my is, family. My parents are, my are any of your family Villa fans? Uh, they've all subsequently been Villa fans since I've been a Villa fan, so they all started following them because I followed them. So what year would this have been, Neil? <laughs> it was... Do you know what it was? Do you know when it was? No, no it don't was try actually, and stall. Don't, don't do you know what it was? You no, know it, was, it was it was, it was about right. four... It was, it was maybe about six six or seven weeks before Luke Nillis broke his leg. So he'd have been okay. playing for Villa at the time then, Boateng. Mm, yeah, yeah, yeah. Can anyone confirm when Neil, Luke Nillis broke his leg? What year was that? Do you, Twin uh, two thousand. Two thousand was Neil sixteen in two thousand. Does that sound about right? I'm gonna say true, Matt. What stage of the holiday did you realise it was George Boateng then? Uh, we were, we were probably about four days in. Yeah, so like we've been going to so there's a adventure park, Fort Ventura was around there. There was a water park, um, like we were just doing things, and then like on the fourth night, I was walking down the stairs. So actually, the apartment was underneath us. So like uh, I was walking down the stairs. The next thing, he was coming out and just happened to kind of click us there who the hell is that guy and then i went, I think that's george boateng so it might not actually have been him it could have been a george boateng lookalike <laughs> I, i'm certain it was him let's cast a vote then i think we've heard enough from neil ty what are you going for true or false i'm gonna go lie now i reckon i'm gonna go true because i think he's tried to throw us a curveball over not knowing whether he was nine or 16 i think that's a <laughs> deliberate misstep just to kind of throw us off track so i'm gonna go true okay i'm gonna say lie uh so neil can you reveal whether that was true or a lie it was a... It was got a problem. Lie! Yeah. Just get in. It was a okay. lie. So points-wise, me and, me and Ty both get a point each for correctly guessing a lie. Neil gets one point for tricking Matt. So Matt's on zero and the rest of us are on one is the way I'm going to score this. Shall we go with the second guess next? And Ty, do you want to go? I can go. Before the world of craziness happened when Mr Matt Kendrick published a certain prank phone call... Um, many moons ago, I pranked another footballer a week before and it didn't get any traction. Interesting. So the, the one that you're referring to is you pranked Brendan Rogers by claiming to be Christian Benteke's agent. Is that correct? That's the one that no, did, did I get traction. Brendan Benteke's agent, agent pretending to be Brendan Rogers. Oh, yeah, yeah, of course. The wrong way around. <laughs> so can you reveal who the football personality was who you attempted yeah. to prank or you pranked? Grant Holt. Isn't he a wrestler now? Did you turn up in He's your a time? wrestler. No, he's, he's actually a scout at West Ham now. True, uh, okay. true story. He? Yeah, he is, yeah. He's clearly done and his homework to back this up. And he's been tech his agent still alive. He didn't <laughs> die of embarrassment after after that, that was published, no? To be fair, <laughs> if everyone if anyone mentions a Ben Techie thing on Twitter, I just ignore it. I never reply. <laughs> with the the one I just mentioned with Ben Techie and Brendan Rogers, who were you portraying? When you're trying to prank Grant Holt, Grant Holt's agent Oliver Johnson. That was his agent at the time, Oliver Johnson. So you were okay. you were you were phoning Grant Holt, pretending to be his agent. No, <laughs> I pranked Grant Holt's agent by pretending to okay. be. 
this is where it gets a bit complicated. So it was Villa related, but I was trying to push a move to Villa. It worked. Right. <laughs> you got hold of Grant Holt's agent. Pretending to be Villa. Pretending to be Villa. Who were you pretending to be from Villa? Who do you think I was pretending to be from Villa? <laughs> well, you can only you can only do really bad kind of Northern Irish accents. So probably Brendan no, my Northern Rod- Irish accents are terrible, <laughs> absolutely awful. But luckily, um, so were you pretending to be Paul Lambert then? Yes, I was. Can we hear kind of a little flavour of, 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 of your Paul I'm Lambert? I'm more bad at a Scottish accent, mate, but the Irish, I'm shaking. Uh, not bad, uh, that's but. not a bad guess, region. Are we willing to cast a vote? I'm going to say it's a lie. Yeah, I'm going to say a lie as well. Yeah, I'm going to say it's a lie as well because Ty's never normally shy, is he? You know, this would have, it would have been, a, a, you know, he's got millions of followers on social. There's no way this I could have been. I didn't have back there. then. I didn't have back then. Okay, so we've all, we've all said lies. So t- try if this is true. You're in the points. Can you reveal the uh, whether this is? It's a it lie. It's a lie. <laughs> but there okay. was a Grant Holt prank <laughs> phone call the week before I did Benteke, but it wasn't me, and I can't <laughs> even remember what the call was about. Okay. To be fair, I should have researched a little bit more. It's my bad, but yeah. Do you know? Do you know? Do you know what got me? What made me think it was a lie, and I don't know why. The fact that you knew. That he was a scout for West Ham, just like that, and, and I don't yeah. know why, because it's probably it's probably That's coming out because probably... of you it five minutes before we went live, and <laughs> Oliver Johnson, his agent, is a complete made up name. I have no idea what his agent. <laughs> you done well there, to be fair, but you didn't fool any of us. We all Nearly, damn there. it, damn Thanks it for all of us there besides you, Ty. So Matt, that comes to you and your dodgy Wi-Fi connection. Do you want to have a oh, go? You see, this story? is I'm worried about Matt. I am worried about Matt because Matt has got a lot of mad stories. Like I know a lot of yeah. Matt's stories off the record about things that he couldn't put online. <laughs> all right, well, you won't be hearing any of them today. Um <laughs> I once fought my sister in the dairy aisle of a supermarket in an Aston Villa dog naming grow. This would have been back in the late late eighties. And I wanted to name it won't be a it won't be a, a surprise to regular listeners that I wanted to name my our dog after David Platt. So David Platt's my favorite player of all time. So I wanted to call our dog Platty. How old are you, Neil? I'm a bit older than all of you, or a lot older than all of you. Neil isn't as old born, as you think. I was born in eighty five. So 85, I was yeah. just touching sixteen when I in two thousand. So yes, that that's just bringing it back full circle to my uh, of course, to my yeah, life. Justifying your lies, yeah. That late eighties, I'd have been kind of ten years old, something like that. And uh, my sister's three years older than me, so do the maths. Uh, and she wanted to name our dog, and we hadn't got this dog yet. He was on the horizon. She wanted to name him Medeiros after a pop star called Glenn Medeiros back then. I don't know, you know. Nothing's gonna change my love for you. You ever heard that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Unfortunately, I've even gone to I've even gone to the trouble of, of having proper kind of singing lessons, so I could I could do that justice. <laughs> so she wanted to name him this. I wanted to name him after after David Platt. We're on holiday in um, we used to holiday at a place near near Barmouth in, in Wales, and it must have been I don't know a little Tesco or something. And I don't think that was the the sole reason that we fought, but that was the the kind of catalyst. And so we just ended up having a little bit of a kind of pushing and a shoving match. And I remember that it was in the dairy aisle because she pushed me into some yogurts, and I broke, broke the yogurts. Anyway, I don't know whether you've ever had a, 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 don't know whether you've got any sisters or, or but sisters fight with kind of claws and and hair pulling <laughs> and stuff like that. And um. Hair pulling. It became so ridiculous. We embarrassed mom and dad so much that none of us <laughs> we didn't get Platy or we didn't get uh we didn't get Madeiros and the dog was actually called Billy in the end. Um so what kind of dog was it? It was what a kind King of dog? Cavalier Spaniel. Okay. I know what I'm gonna say to this. I don't need any more information. And why was it called Billy? I don't know actually. I'm not not, not sure. I don't, know. I don't think it was named after footballers or, or pop stars, to be honest. How did you break yogurts when yogurts are in a fridge? Yeah, but they're on a they're on an open thing, aren't they? You don't oh, actually have them on a glass door if they're on a counter. I think it's true. <laughs> too much too much random detail, unless it's a very well rehearsed. Yeah, but, yeah, Kendo could get away with that man. He could. I know he could. <laughs> I'm I'm going true. I'll go I'm, true. I'm going lie. Just because. <laughs> okay, Matt, do you want to reveal? <laughs> you probably can't. It was a lie. It was a lie. It was a, 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 <laughs> a well rehearsed story, as I said. Yeah, there were details of it. We have had, we have had fights like that in the past. I've probably put together about six or seven fights, but uh, 
the dog was called Anna. <laughs> Uh, in the <laughs> so that's two more points from Matt for falling, me and Ty, and one point for Neil for correctly calling it. So you're all done one each, and to be fair, we, are, we probably are good enough for time to do all three. So whoever wants to go next and take your pick doesn't need to... Oh, are you not doing any role, though? Is it just us for it? Nah, I'm just hosting. You've been yeah. host? Well, that's no just fun. Just hosting. You can yeah. stay in the same order if you want. Okay. Neil Diamond sings sings Sweet Caroline. Aston Villa fans sing Sweet Caroline, and I'm named after Neil Diamond. True. <laughs> My dad is a huge Neil Diamond fan. I've seen Neil Diamond about eight times live, maybe really? even nine. When was uh, Neil Diamond knocking about? When was he famous? He only gave up performing, I'd say, about four or five years ago. Just yeah, just before COVID, I saw him 2016. I'd say even 2016, 2015. Oh, so you're a fan of Neil Diamond as well? Oh, I've 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 just become a fan because I was named after him. Oh, I think your mom would have wanted to name him after a Villa player, and there'd have been a big fight in a Tesco's over it. (laughs) The only interaction I've ever had with my mother about Aston Villa was when Dwight York was sold, and I read it on Teddy Text, and this is a true story. And I walked out to to the uh, to the kitchen, and I went, "Ma'am, Dwight York's been sold," and she went, "So what?" And I literally, I swear, if I was like, "You idiot! This is the worst day of my life." That's uh, so. That's that's probably the only villain interaction I've ever had with my mother. So. I think it's true. Do you? I think it's yeah, a really, really tenuous, tenuous Aston Villa link, but I do think it's true. What do you think, Ty? I don't know, man. Neil's a proper old fogey name, isn't it? So, <laughs> it really is. So I'm, do- I'm just doing a bit of Googling, right? And I'm only on Wikipedia here. But it says that Neil Diamond's uh, record sales slumped somewhat in the 80s and 90s. So I don't know whether he would have been popular enough for somebody to want to name their child after in 1985. Maybe slumped because the because Neil arrived. <laughs> Maybe that was that that affected it. I'm going to lie. I think <laughs> you've funny. worked out who a, who an Aston Villa Neil is. And try to work the story backwards. So I'm going to say, "Lovely to go with Neil Cox or something like that." Or <laughs> Neil Cox, other Neils. I'm going to say true, man. True, true. true. Yeah. Go on, Neil. Tell us. That is true. I was originally yeah. supposed to be called Brian, but then I was called Neil out of nowhere. I think my dad did it, um, unbeknownst to my mum. Very good. That's Matt on four points. Neil four points. Ty and me are both on two. Uh, you guys get to earn more points, though, because you've got stories to tell, so my score it doesn't really count. Ty, do you want to go next? I am good friends with ex-England international, Sue Smith. I... How, did this, how did this friendship come about? My, my question is, where's the Villa link? <laughs> there is no Villa link. However, uh, yeah. there was a time where she was covering Villa on Sky Sports News, <laughs> and she wanted to know the, the least intelligent person's opinion on how Villa were doing just that was unavailable. Sure and did you give a Bardell's number or what <laughs> so, um, so this came about on Twitter and you've remained friends since yeah we talk on WhatsApp voice notes we speak frequently I congratulated her recently as she is a voice on this year's uh, FC 24 new EA game um, she's a commentator on that so I thanked her flat spoke to her a couple of days ago true story well, it sounds perfectly reasonable well, here, here's the tenuous Villa link. I did uh, a show for Premier League Productions. Um, I did two or three shows for them, uh, which are aired outside of the UK. And every time I've done it, sorry, two out of the three times I've done it, Sue Smith has been there. So there's your tenuous Villa link. Okay, <laughs> if you want, if you want to bring it in that way. But do you know? And also, her? also Neil, she's got the same initials as Steve Sidwell. So Sue so came to you because of. She wanted some kind of villa she, representation. She, didn't come to me. she wanted briefly before that, um, but she asked me my opinion on a few things um, before she was doing an episode which featured a chat about villa. Okay, I've heard enough. It's it's the it's the friends thing that gets <laughs> me. I class her as a friend. I talk to her about friend. non-football related stuff. That's the same with Bardell. He thinks I'm his mate, but I, he's just <laughs> an, a, an associate to me. I think it's true. I think it's true. I also think it's true. I think it's perfectly reasonable that that's true. Yeah. And if it is a lie, I don't feel bad about thinking it's true. Yeah, Ty's a lovely true. person. I'm sure that's it's fine. True. It is true. It is true. Okay, yeah, good. True story. Matt, did you want to take it? Where were your second? I once got invited to Villa Park, shook Randy Lerner's hand. Lie. Wait, wait. Got invited, shook Randy Lerner's hand, and then got kicked out for trespassing. Ah, oh, true. <laughs> true. <laughs> Definitely true, mate. I thought he was a lie too. He said you got an invite to Villa Park because that definitely wouldn't happen. Yeah, it wasn't recent. <laughs> what year was this? 
it would have been uh, during the Randy Lerner era, anyway. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What year specifically? I can't remember exactly what manager it was, but the, the context of it was that the manager had been sacked, and there was almost like a scramble to try and get photos of Randy Lerner and Paul Faulkner in like a summit to decide the next manager. And um, so I got tipped off that they'd be having a meeting with all the kind of heads of department at the Holt pub and said, listen, rather than getting your photographers to, to stake out Villa Park or Bodymore for like the next week, you'll have an opportunity there when we walk from the back of the Holt suite to the Holt pub. You can get a, you can get a photograph taken there. It's done. Then go away and leave it alone. Now, the problem that we had was that... I turned up as well as a photographer. So I was like live blogging. There used to be, I don't know whether they're still there. There used to be like some picnic benches out at the Holt pub. So I got my laptop and was live blogging. True to form, Randy Lerner and Paul Faulkner walk up, rock across the, the car park. I'd met Randy Lerner briefly, but I actually he saw me sitting outside. So I shook his hand. Mm-hmm. Because our photographer is not very discreet. There was like all the press pack there. So Sky were there. <laughs> There's about like 10 or 11 reporters and photographers and cameramen there. So this was recorded on Sky with their little ticker tape going back on Sky Sports News. So it played me shaking Randy Lerner's hand on Sky. And then the press officer, who was the only one who hadn't been looped into this, <laughs> suddenly spotted me and had a go at me for being there, being on Villa Private Property when all this big meeting was happening. And made me stop live blogging, jump back in my car, and get off the premises. Since then, I've had a beautiful relationship with her, <laughs> with my beloved club. He said he got invited to Villa. First lie. Secondly, he got a tip <laughs> off. Birmingham Mail haven't leaked a, <laughs> a, a, a story on anything Villa related. It hey, actually, Toy. Actually, There's I'm going to take lines. your part. No, I'm going to take your task <laughs> on that because we used to speak to. Um, Brendan Rogers quite often. He used to phone us. He used to phone us after Ben hey, look, and Darren, you know? I'm the only person, yeah, who has given you an exclusive, mate. Let's get something right, Kendrick. <laughs> I don't know, you know, because that could be a Kendrick thing. I really do mm. think it could be a Matt thing. And I know what? Matt is the favourite person. Uh, of, yeah, you reckon, he's, you reckon he's playing on that reputation a little bit? It could be. That's a shout, you know, Rollo. It's a shout. The 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 thing for me is, why would they meet in the whole pub when they could just meet in 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 the boardroom? Because they wanted the photo opportunity. They were happy to like share. When that. did Randy Lerner ever want a photo opportunity? <laughs> the yeah. man was trying to run away from the club when Paul Faulkner was there. He couldn't get further away. I don't know how much Lerner oh. knew about the photo opportunity. Okay. If you're on about the Holt pub on the corner and they told you to get yeah. off the property, you can literally just come out the gate and then you're off the property, then it's public, yep. then it's public And that's property. exactly what I did. So I was parked. But you said parked. you went and got in your car and stopped blogging. So which one is it, Kendo? No, I was parked on the car park outside the back of the Holt. Fair. I was blogging by the little picnic benches. I got back in my car to say, listen, I'll go get away from the from the, the pub and I'll do it in my in my car. But that still wasn't far enough away. So we had the pathetic situation of me getting in my car, driving about 50 yards and parking up over the road. Okay, I know what I'm going for here. Ty, Neil, what do you reckon? I don't remember this being on Sky, but I'm still going to say true. Yeah. I'm also saying true, yeah. Yeah, I'm going to say true as well. It was, in fact, true. 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 <laughs> Bloody villa. <laughs> we'll carry on in the same order, Neil. What's your final story? I own a pair of Martin Larson actual issued uh, kind of three-quarter length pants from the Hummel era. Yeah. Where did you get them? eBay. How tall are you, Neil? Because you're sitting down at the moment. The the thing is, they're three-quarter length on Martin Larson. They go right <laughs> down to my ankles. <laughs> <laughs> they are massive, is all I will say. <laughs> You're actually wearing them with turnips. <laughs> I I used to I, I used to wear them um I used to wear them when I went football training myself. Um but just because of the hilarity of seeing of, of them being on me. They were massive. Was Martin Larson there drawing a Hummel era kit? I think he probably was. How old was you when you acquired them? I would have been in my twenties. I would have been twenty. I actually, do you know what? I'll tell you exactly what uh, the year. It was two thousand. It was two thousand and seven, around November, or December in two thousand and seven. And the reason I remember is because I got a Welsh, the third, jer- the Welsh third jersey. I got on eBay as well, and it was yellow and green, 
and uh, it was an absolutely hideous jersey and board from them came the same day. I was about to say yeah, we were nice in 2007, but just because you got them in 2007 doesn't mean oh, they yeah. were that years, were they? No, 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 no. These they, they weren't that year. No, no, no. They weren't. They weren't that year. Where okay. um, where would George Botang have been going on holiday that year? Do you know? <laughs> <laughs> where where did you get them? But you bought them on eBay, did you say? I bought them on eBay. Yeah. How, how, how much? much? Twenty five quid, maybe. I don't know. No idea. Was it was, was, was Diamond a, an eBay stomper in 07? He won't call to be one of them then. I, I mm. think he's telling Paul. I did go through. I was I, I was working as so I used to I used to have a career in architecture before, and um it was just before the Lie. crash. So there was a ton of <laughs> there was a ton of expendable income <laughs> at that time. I don't think that you'd find something like that on eBay in 2007. Now I know years. about your job history, Neil, because obviously me and you have worked alongside each other on a podcast that is no longer existing. Um so I know quite a lot about you, and I think you're talking absolute panties. <laughs> there were three quarter length shorts, but Did sorry, you... like three quarter length pants, like short thingies. Like, Did you like wear them warm? What yeah, he was training like, wear. Yeah, training yeah. Wear? Is that ever been a thing? Wear. It's surely just joggers or shorts, no? How, how do you know there were licenses? Did it come with any kind of certificate of authenticity? It has the number five kind of it, it's not it's not printed on them. It's it's the number five is like almost built into the actual short itself. They were like a cotton type of short, and the number five is like pressed onto it um in the area. Yeah, and it was sold on eBay as Martin Larson's short. Yeah, I'm I'm leaning towards lie. We've had one of each now, so you know, like in an exam, when you have a few answers the same, you think, oh, it's probably the other one. I don't have that this time. How much? How much of a a, a kind of souvenir and memento kind of collector are you, Neil? Obviously, you, you you've got plenty plenty of plenty of merch over your shoulder, but is that something that you've kind of made a habit of down the years? Or? No, no. I and when when I bought these, I bought them for a complete novelty. I didn't know they were going to be ridiculously big. I suppose when I say they're three quarter length, three quarter length, they're, they're, they're like long shorts. The shorts, they're supposed to go down to your knee or just below your knee. But for me, they went like, no, the other way down. Like I'm five, five, seven at a push. Like, and the Martin Larson's six, four. Lies, lies, What, what, lies. what, what color, Neil? What color? Navy, and they had the chevrons down the side. Nah, I ain't having it. I ain't having it. He no, might have had not. the chevrons down the side, but I've googled. Did, you ever wear them? Did I ever wear them? I wore, I wore them like football training and stuff like that. When Abba uh, Tribute uh, Band perhaps. night, yeah. <laughs> they're, not, they're not flare. Like they don't flare out. Or well, you like said that. flares, not just, us. I, I didn't. I said you quarter like shorts or something like that. I didn't say. He's lying, man. He's full yeah. of. Full of waffle, I'm going, you. Oh, I'm man. going lie as well. There's too many things that have kind of tripped over each other here, I think. We've yeah, I'm it. a bit... I can't see somebody who's named after Neil Diamond rocking a kind of MC Hammer style look. It just doesn't... It just doesn't go... I'm, I'm going lie. It's, it's actually true, but I was just realising, I goes, I'm telling this story, but I've no way of actually proving it on the, on the podcast <laughs> since I don't have the pair of shorts. But it is actually true. I bought a pair of shorts that were... Uh, Martin Larson's on eBay for 25 quid and they were massive and I will try and get them out of cold storage. Well, you said they were they three are. quarter lengths not short so there's a lie. <laughs> <laughs> Ty, give us your uh, your final story of the day. I missed an opportunity to go on a night out with John McGinn and Jack Grealish. When was this? It was after so I was in corporate on Villa v Everton on that Friday night when I had mm. to, when I took uh, Bardal and Lisa Smith came as well, and I wore a suit jacket, jeans, and a shirt, and it was the hottest night in the actual universe. It was that night where um, Villa Park was rocking, um, and then me and Bardal went into the players' lounge after uh, and chilled with Kevan, which is Jack's brother, and then we left Villa Park, and then uh, Kevan was trying to persuade us, to, me and Dan, to go into town. But we were both shattered. We both had long days before the football and we both said no. But at that point, we didn't know Jack and John were out. Um, he was just saying, do you want to go uptown? And we were like, no, we're going to go home. And that night, Kev ended up in a club having a few beers with them to celebrate in us beating Everton. And you okay. what, went back for a quiet night with Wesley and Hotter. <laughs> <laughs> no, I went home. I went home. What, what made you decide not to just, I'm tired? Shattered. Yeah, I was shattered. No more than that. There's it's straight blank, just shattered. Were you concerned you wouldn't get they wouldn't let you in anywhere wearing three quarter lengths? 
uh, Neil wasn't with me, so it's fine. <laughs> <laughs> My Discord pants were put away that night. What, what, what was Dan wearing? Was it something? Well, I rascal? tell you, but a hundred percent, it would have been rascal. Well, I'll let you two decide because you two are the main players, really. What, what do you? He's got the pen. Hmm. It's like there's 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 something in it. Like there's something. I don't know. Would you guys turn down a trip into town, regardless? Regardless yes. of even whether oh, I was a club promoter for most of my twenties, so the party in life hasn't interested me since I stopped doing that in like just before I became a dad. So like 2018, 2017, I kind of retired as of then. Mm. I've been out a few times, of course, but I I don't really drink anymore. I have one or two here and there, but well, you know that's true, Neil. Mm. You know that part's true. That's true. I'm gonna say it's true. I'm gonna say it's true as well. Um, but it's a bit. I think it's a bit of a lame story. Ty, it's a bit like saying I, I nearly plucked up the courage to ask out Miss World, and it. Do you know what I mean? Coming from the person who um, had no, an argument in a supermarket with a sister about the name of their dog. <laughs> yeah, it's true. It's true. Sticking with true. I'm also going to say true, true as well. Yeah. Well, for the sake of difference, I probably should have gone lie. True. True. It's true. Okay. Me and Jack have got a mutual friend called Lee, um, who works in the nightlife industry. Um, he's been close with Jack since like he was on loan at Knox County days. Um, and uh, yeah, they ended up out after that night celebrating. I think the gaffer let him out. And uh, yeah, missed the night of my life. And we've regretted it ever since. You say you regret it ever since. Don't, don't beat yourself up, self up over it, man. It's, 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 it's fine. <laughs> well, I don't like cry myself to sleep over it, Neil. It's not that deep. <laughs> but you know, you just I, 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 I'd change. hate to think you would. Right, so a little bit of jeopardy then. We're on to our final story. Again, the final three so far have all been true. Neil's got 10 points. Ty's got three, which to be fair, Ty, you've told, you know, we, we all we've all believed you every time, so you're, you're an oh, honest bloke. Yeah, like, that's why. I'm like taking from that. Uh, Matt is on one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So, Matt, you need to convince all of us of whatever your story is here to at least tie the game. Me and, me and Ty can't catch you. So... Can you please go through your final story, please? I once had a week-long detention for having a V shaved into my head. Oh, so you've never had hair in your life. <laughs> a V? What do you mean a, a v? v? A V. For Aston Villa. Not not a single V. A V. Aston I mean, Villa. you've got a slab head, but it ain't that big. I mean, in the back back of my, my hair. Like, you know where you have there like was... whatever. There was this trend whereby people were getting like Nike ticks and everything shaved into the back of their head and stuff like that. Uh, maybe the early nineties. Yeah, but would kids have done that in the in the sixties when Matt was a kid? <laughs> That's true. Have you got any photos of it? No, but I think I was probably quite embarrassed and ashamed because quite a good boy. So to get into trouble, um, I used to rock quite a few haircuts, but unbelievably back in the day. But um, the thing that annoyed me about it was. A month previously, or however often I had my hair cut back then, I'd had MK for my initial, my own initial shaving in the back of it, and nah. nobody seemed to have a problem with it. Nah. Nobody seemed to have a problem with it. But when I got the AV in there, I don't know whether one of our teachers must have been a blue nose or something. Incitement to violence, Matt. You're lucky you only got a week. One month you had MK in the back of your head, went to school, and no one, no one batted an eyelid, no one cared. You had your hair cut the yeah. following month and had AV in there instead for Aston Villa, and you got a week's long detention for that. Yeah, I don't, I don't understand it myself either, to be honest. But uh, we had to do detention and, and, and isolation with a teacher called Mister Ferrari, which makes it <laughs> just a just a <laughs> just a random detail. Uh, I've heard enough on this one, gents. What do we think? I'm saying yes. I'm saying true. You reckon it's true? I reckon a lie. You're saying lie. Matt well, is sorry. stupid enough to do something about that, but I do think it's a lie. It was yeah. when he said he had MK in his head, the, the haircut before. That yeah, was, MK like, and Mr. Ferrari's. Is was it too, say, too well, no, MK Dons wouldn't have been about back then, would they? It would have been Wimbledon. <laughs> <laughs> it is true. It's true. There was a trend where people used to just get stuff shaved into the back of their heads back in the yeah, early yeah. 90s. They, they, they I, had it when I was growing up as well. People had like lightning bolts and all sorts of things. I was never, I never went that wide, to be honest. I'd have been about. 13 or 14 but it was really weird back then and then i'll just i might have told you this story before dan but i'll just add a tiny little bit of embellishment to it i used to do everything i possibly could to avoid detention because i used to be bullied by some kids around the corner from my house and they'd come back from their school and i'd come back from my school at a similar well 
if I if I came home straight away from school, I'd be able to get home without them getting mm. me. But if I ever had detention, I'd be late. I'd have to run the gauntlet of of these kids, these kind of rough kids from around the corner. So I was probably more bothered about getting my head kicked in by getting detention than I was any kind of trouble I got with my parents. But um, yeah, there you go. Yeah, quite a bleak end into the show there with bullying. I was <laughs> laughing throughout that and I didn't mean it to be funny, but just the way you described it and you have told me that before. So, scores then. Neil is the winner of today's show with 12 points. Uh, Matt is the runner-up with nine. Uh, I got five points just for taking part, and Ty got three. So, Ty, an honest bloke is is what I'll I'll give you for there. Uh, Neil, a dirty, stinking liar. We've had loads of stories here that were all true, all lies. I know that you've all narrowed it down to just three. So, if people enjoy this and they want to see a part two and you guys want to come back for a part two, I'll be happy to do one of those. Uh, If you did enjoy this, let us know in the comments down below. Matt, Ty and Neil, thanks for joining me. Uh, We'll see you again on another episode very soon. Up the villa. Up the villa. Up the villa.